So today we're going to talk about the first three chapters of Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. I've been meaning to do this for a very long time. I have some stuff I posted on my website a very long time ago, and I just never got around to it. But here we go. So, Emily Bronte wrote Wuthering Heights and the time period for this book is 1801. Heathcliff is a very reserved man and welcomes Mr. Lockwood inside. Lockwood sees him as cold and distant in his first meeting. However, this coldness has Lockwood very interested. He enters his establishment and we meet Joseph, an old man, and Joseph is easily annoyed, and we learn the name of Mr. Heathcliff's dwelling, and the dwelling's name is Wuthering Heights. The outside of the building has a door with the name Hareton Earnshaw carved into it, and the date 1500. There's an absolute wilderness of crumbling statues, griffins, and children. Noticing the dates, Lockwood wants to ask about the history of the house. But Heathcliff's cold nature and indifference makes him not want to ask. And so he begrudgingly goes inside. So Lockwood slowly makes his way into the family room. And there's like, there's no lobby or passage. They just call it the house. It has a kitchen and a parlor. However, the kitchen is kind of forced into another area. He also sees a swarm of puppies. The apartment and furniture are nothing fancy very simple, that of a farmer. Heathcliff is very dark-skinned, so in the book they refer to him as looking like a gypsy. However, he is dressed and his manners are that of a gentleman or a country squire. Heathcliff is rather handsome to Lockwood's mind. Heathcliff leaves to find Joseph who is not hurrying, and leaves Lockwood alone in the room with a jealous mama dog who isn't used to strangers. Then, four dog friends show up and start to surround him. After a terrifying interaction with the dogs, Heathcliff returns and offers Lockwood some wine, which Lockwood initially declines. Lockwood finds Heathcliff intelligent and interesting, and Heathcliff, not knowing he was going to have visitors, offers Lockwood an invitation to visit tomorrow, even though he feels like Heathcliff is not very sociable. So now we're in chapter two. So chapter two starts in Lockwood's study at his home. It's a cold day and he would rather stay in. However, he has this maid and she's refusing his request to eat dinner at 5 p.m. and will only give him dinner at 1 p.m. So he decides to leave and take up the offer to meet Heathcliff at his house. He leaves on a bitter, bitterly cold, snowy day and marches the four miles to Heathcliff's. When he gets there, everything is locked up and he just jumps over the gate and knocks on the door. And he waits a really long time and he's looking around and he sees no one and so he continues to knock on the door, 
and eventually Joseph the servant greets him and refuses to to open the door and tells him to take the side entrance. A man with a pitchfork shows up behind him and asks him to follow him back to the side entrance. Once inside a very warm sitting room, he meets a young woman who Lockwood initially believes is a mute. She won't respond to any of his small talk. And when he talks about the terrible weather, she responds in a passive-aggressive manner and says, You should have stayed home then. She gets up to reach for canisters, and he sees how beautiful she is, but she is still very dismissive and very quiet. She's acting as if he's not even there. He offers to help her, and she refuses this offer, and seems actually annoyed by the offer. She starts to make tea for him, and asks, Are you here for the tea? He said, No. She immediately stops and puts everything away, and sits back in the chair, and pouts. When a young servant comes into the room, He begins to doubt whether or not this man is a servant. His dress and speech were both were both rude. However, entirely devoid of the superiorities observed by Mr. and Mrs. Heathcliff. His hands were that of a common laborer. However, his bearing was free while attending the lady of the house. Lockwood is very unsure of this man. So Lockwood can't pinpoint who this man is and he refrains from asking too many questions. He's relieved when Heathcliff shows up snow covered. He announces he is here for their Lockwood announces that he's here for their scheduled visit and Heathcliff and as as the snow is continually getting worse Lockwood asks Heathcliff to stay for an extra half hour because of the horrible weather Heathcliff tells him he's afraid the weather does not seem to be letting up anytime soon and Heathcliff tells him Walking on the moors with the weather this way is hugely dangerous. So Lockwood asks to borrow one of Heathcliff's guides and offers to let the guide stay for the night at the Grange where Lockwood lives. But Heathcliff refuses and demands the young woman make tea. She speaks to Heathcliff and She, referring to Lockwood, says, is he to have any? He says in such a manner of annoyance, just make the tea, will you? And it was so bullying that it shocked Lockwood. And finally, after a lot of embarrassment, it is revealed the young woman is Heathcliff's daughter-in-law and the young servant seemingly is his son and then Lockwood finds out very quickly that the servant is not his son that Heathcliff's son had died and the red-faced young man tells him his name is Hareton Earnshaw and demands respect. The young man has his eyes fixated on Lockwood for such a long time that he worries if the boy continues this, his internal laughter will be inaudible. So Lockwood 
Lockwood realizes that there was such an age gap between them and how could he be so clueless? He is also starting to notice the growing rage between Heathcliff and his daughter-in-law. He notices Earnshaw and sees him as a as repulsive and he thinks he is far more attractive than him and wonders if he can win the heart of Mrs. Heathcliff. He sees her as locked up like a prisoner, so she's just stuck. Heathcliff looks at Mr. Heathcliff looks at Mrs. Heathcliff with the look of pure hatred. And Lockwood is becoming more and more concerned about the snow and once again asks for a guide and this falls on deaf ears and Heathcliff is starting to become very snarky about Lockwood's blunder over him believing Mrs. Heathcliff was his, his wife. So Joseph comes back with a pail of food for the dogs and Joseph tells Lockwood, how can you just stand there with this storm brewing? What are you going to do? And this is where Mrs. Heathcliff checks Joseph and calls him a scandalous old hypocrite. She basically says he will be carried away by the devil just from mentioning his name. She warns him not to provoke her further. She grabs a black book and tells him she has furthered her study in the black arts. Now, Joseph is trembling with horror and he rushes out of the room, literally praying. Now, Lockwood asks her for help getting home and she says, take the room you came. He says, if he dies, then it's on her hands. She says they won't let her past the garden gates. And he says he doesn't want her to go with him, just show him the way. She says there is no one that can help him. And so he says he will, he's just going to have to stay then. And she says she hopes he learned his lesson. After a crazy situation, while he tries to leave, he is finally given a room for the night. So this starts the beginning of chapter three. Mrs. Heathcliff tells him no one is allowed to ever stay there willingly. He asked her why no one ever stays and she doesn't know. So he settles in the room for the night. In his room, he places a light on a ledge and he sees writing scratched into in large and small, the name Catherine Earnshaw and Catherine Heathcliff, then Catherine Linton. Still ill at ease, he dozes off and wakes up abruptly. He looks at a stack of books in the corner, inscribed with the name Catherine. Now Mr. Lockwood is very interested in this mysterious Catherine and he tries to decipher her writings. And this is where the story begins, as Lockwood reads the journals of a child. We learn of a young man named Hindley, and he thinks Heathcliff is a vagabond. And he tells Catherine they can't play together anymore, and they would have to send him away. Catherine is a young child and Hindley is forcing Catherine to stay away from Heathcliff. He says he will make him know his position, and Hindley says their father was too lenient with Heathcliff, and he needs to know, and he needs to learn his place. So, this is...